I'd like to start with a simplified flowchart of an ordinary civil action. Note that this is very simplified and the purpose is to give you the big picture. In the beginning, this flowchart may not make sense to you, but consider each part as a puzzle piece. As you go along, you'll be able to put the puzzle pieces together and the whole picture will make sense. In any case, if you have questions, put it in the comment box and I'll do my best to answer you promptly. The flowchart starts with a cause of action. The cause of action is what triggers the filing of a case. Remember, without any cause of action, there's no reason for filing a case. There's no basis for filing a complaint. Later on in another video, we will define these concepts and discuss them in detail. But for now, I'll give you enough information to make you understand the big picture. The cause of action belongs to the plaintiff. He's one of the primary actors in an ordinary civil action. He's the owner of the right that was violated by the defendant, the other primary actor in a civil case. Because his right was violated, the plaintiff files a complaint, which we call an initiatory pleading. It initiates or starts the case. In response, the defendant files a pleading called an answer. The answer may admit certain matters in the complaint. It will also contain the defenses of the defendant. In the answer, the defendant may also raise certain claims against the plaintiff, which we will call a counterclaim. The defendant may also raise certain claims against a co-defendant, which we will call a cross-claim. After the plaintiff and defendant, known as the parties, file their complaint and answer respectively, the case will now be set for pretrial. Pretrial has several purposes. Perhaps the parties might agree on amicable settlement, which can lead to the early resolution of the case. If not, the parties will be required to lay their cards on the table by agreeing on the issues to be tried and disclosing the evidence that they intend to present during the trial. Once the pretrial is over, trial will be held in which the plaintiff will be required to present evidence first and then rest his case. Then the defendant will present evidence and rest his case. After both parties have completed their evidence presentation, the court will render a judgment. The party who does not agree with a judgment may file a motion for reconsideration, motion for a new trial, or an appeal within the 15 days from notice of the judgment. The judgment will become final and executory after the lapse of 15 days if none of these were filed. On the other hand, if this were filed, the parties will wait for this to be resolved. The judgment will then become final and executory and may now be enforced. For example, if the plaintiff won the case and the judge rendered a judgment finding the defendant liable for a sum of money, this is the time to enforce judgment. However, there are still two extraordinary remedies available to the losing party even after the judgment has become final and executory. These are a petition for relief and an action to annul the judgment. This can be availed of under very exceptional circumstances as we will study in another video. As I said, this is a very simplified flowchart of an ordinary civil action. A lot of incidents can and will take place such as service of summons, the filing of motions, pre-trial briefs, and others. I decided to simply simplify it at this stage so that you will not be confused. At the end of this uh, outline, I will present you with a very detailed flowchart to show you all the possibilities that can happen in an ordinary civil action. By then, you'll be able to tie all these together and all the different parts will make sense. In the meantime, I can only advise you to be patient with yourself as you become familiar with the concepts and procedures. Receive notices of more videos that will help you in your law studies. Remember to like and subscribe. This is Attorney Chato Olivas Quinto. See you at the next video.